have a basement apartment in a small, quiet town, and I routinely go for walks on sleepless nights. The streets stay busy during the day since I'm only a couple blocks away from the heart of downtown. But at night, there's rarely a soul to be seen. I'm an introvert who works from home, so this is really the only time I even go outside. I always walk the same route. It makes a square that leads right back to the front door. At the halfway point, there's a house that's been empty longer than I've been alive. It's known for being haunted. But I've never believed in that stuff or been inside of it until last night. As I was passing by, I heard a banging sound coming from inside and what sounded like a muffled cry for help. I thought some nosy kid had gotten stuck or something. As I approached the front window to look inside, there was only silence. So I called through the broken glass. Hello? Is anyone here? Are you okay? I couldn't make out what was said, but someone or something in the back of the house answered me. I still couldn't make out most of the words, but at least one was help. Or maybe hell. But help seemed more likely given the circumstances. I had to lay my jacket over the broken glass along the windowsill. But I clearly wasn't the first to do so. Kids were always daring each other to go inside. Which is why I was so ready to believe that one was in there right now. As soon as I got in, I noticed it was several degrees colder. But I didn't have much time to think about it because there was also an awful smell. The worst stench I've ever experienced. It was like something died and was left to rot in the sun for weeks. The floor creaked beneath my every step as I crossed the living room area and entered the kitchen. Trash was scattered everywhere, and the smell was somehow growing worse the further I went. Realizing I hadn't heard anything since coming inside, I called out again. Is anyone here? The only answer I received was a sudden, desperate knocking on the basement door. It was eight to ten feet away, and I could see it shaking in its frame with each violent bang. I thought some kid had gotten locked down there and was getting the scare of his life, but then the doorknob turned effortlessly in my hand and nobody was on the other side. I was, however, hit with a powerful blast of something putrid. It made me throw up a little. I definitely found the source of whatever was causing that horrendous smell. I couldn't see anything past the dark staircase, and I didn't want to. I suddenly felt like something was watching me, and I couldn't get out of there fast enough. Something had lured me into that house, and now... It wanted me to go down the stairs, but I wasn't having it. I turned around and ran, but when I crossed through the living room, something pushed me down. It felt like two hands pressed flat on my back and shoved me right to the ground. I was a little dazed and extremely frightened, but there was nothing around me, so I got back up and stumbled outside in a hurry. When I got home... I could still feel the imprint of where something had touched my back. So I looked in the mirror, and I found two large red marks right in the center. I don't know what's in that abandoned house, but I don't joke about it anymore. The place is absolutely haunted. Let me tell you how to score a couple of free flights to anywhere on the North American continent. All you gotta do is spend six hours on a non-stop flight to Montreal in a packed airplane while seated next to a dead man. And wouldn't you know it, he got the window seat. The dead man hadn't boarded the plane like this, however. Allow me to explain. I'm flying home from a bachelor party. I'm the last class on the plane. And when I get to my row of seats, it's in between two older men around the same age as each other. But they don't know each other, so my spot was right there in between them. 8B, 
8A and 8C are filled up, as well as every other number and letter on this plane. So, on a packed flight with no other option, I'm forced to squeeze in. The stewardess has to come over and push me down in my seat. My knees are almost up to my chest as I started to feel hungover from the morning of drinking I did just hours earlier. Don't be all judgy. My best friend was getting married, so I decided I'd surprise him by showing up and getting wasted with all of his groomsmen while he played it safe. Because he was getting married in the morning. His groom men didn't really give a fuck, though. It was cool. I couldn't stay for the wedding because I had to work on Sunday and the rest of the week. Anyway, flying there was fine. I was with all the guys. We had two layovers before getting to California. But on the way back, I was by myself. I thought that the six-hour flight would be an easier trip. I was arriving home at four. My girlfriend was picking me up before she went to work. The plane takes off and ten minutes into the air, the window seat guy starts huffing and gasping then just slumps forward. His forehead came to rest on the chair in front of him. If I hadn't heard him struggling, I'd have probably thought he was sleeping. Maybe. It looked like a pretty uncomfortable position to be in. I tap the man, asking if he's alright. He doesn't respond. I tap the button above me. When a flight attendant walks over, I express the concerns I had regarding the man's odd behavior. She also attempts to get his attention a few times before she places her hand on his neck, checking for a pulse. She then quickly leans back up and walks down the aisle, straight into the cockpit. A few minutes later, she walks out and points to the back. One of the pilots is standing next to her, leaned out of the doorway looking at my section. They then both return back into the cockpit, before the stewardess again walks out and closes the door behind her. She walks out of sight, and I eagerly wait for her to return. When she does, she's with another woman. She has a stethoscope and checks the man by the window. Then, she and the other stewardess drape a white sheet over the man. Then I'm told that the pilots have decided not to make an emergency landing, because the man was dead There was technically no longer an emergency. Her face sort of does this funny thing as she delivers the next bit of information. Due to the flight being full, they were unable to move the man, and in turn, also unable to move me and the other man, the alive one. She says that when the plane does land, the man seated next to me and myself will be compensated for our patience with the unfortunate circumstances. Then it was suggested I scroll through their movie selection to pass time. I guess I was sort of in shock. I just started going through the movies. I chose Fast and Furious, Tokyo Drift. The other man opted for sleeping. I don't know how in the hell he was able to sleep with a dead man sitting two seats away, but I guess I'd find out soon. Most of the cabin lights were out in the plane when I turned my light off. But out of the corner of my eye, I swear to God, the guy under the sheet moved. Like, leaned up for a second, before drooping back down. My heart started racing. I quickly flipped the light back on. Never felt a sensation like that before. My teeth jittered when I saw the white fabric start raising. The light above me leaves a glare on the screen that I'm trying to watch the movie on, but every time I flip the light off, the sheet starts to twitch and move. I close my eyes and try not to look in its direction. Then, its leg shakes and bumps mine. It's too much. I jump up without even thinking, waking the man next to me. He looks annoyed. He fixes his eye mask and proceeds to sleep. I look around the plane. Those near our seats seem to be aware of what's happening, whereas the front of the plane seems less involved in what's going on. Either way, none of these people are going to switch seats with me. I reluctantly sit back down. I can't even focus on the movie anyway. Only the man. He's not moving for now. I'm too afraid to even close my eyes. I find myself spiraling internally at the situation at hand. 
I focus on my small cabin light, staring into it instead of anywhere else on the plane. I don't know how much time passed as I stared and thought about this mess, and suddenly the light flickers ever so slightly. Never seen that before. Just as suddenly, a woman from in front of me turns around and says, I'm sorry, what was that? What do you need? She's making eye contact through the small slit between the seats. I didn't say anything, so I told her, I didn't say anything, sorry. She stands up, turns around, looks from me to the man sleeping, to the man under the sheet. She's starting to resemble what I'm feeling inside, horrified. She asks if I'm sure, which I am, so I tell her as much. She apologized and slowly took her seat. What was that? I had no idea but it didn't help me with my feelings of anxiety or dread. I looked over at the dead man, still not moving. That's good. I turned toward the sleeping man, and I closed my eyes. Somehow, someway, I fell asleep. I don't think it lasted very long, and either way, I was awoken abruptly by being met with a horrifying odor. It, along with some newfound sounds are coming from the dead man. Holy fuck, I think to myself. I'm smelling this guy now. It doesn't take long before I notice that others around me are already reacting to this smell, looking around for the source of the offensive odor. Of course, I knew where it was coming from, and it was inescapable. How was it humanly possible to be in this situation? My mind was bending over and over again, and it continued through the entire flight. I didn't sleep another wink, just sat there, paranoid, looking at the dead man every few moments. I still hadn't turned my cabin light off, so I could see. The man had shifted. Surely just naturally. Natural death stuff, that's what I told myself. It must have been another hour into the flight... I heard this moan or groan, but it sounded very alive. The woman in front of me, she heard it too. I see her turn and make eye contact through the seats. Silently yet collectively, we both hit the button for assistance, anxiously waiting to see a stewardess head in our direction. When she arrives, I ask if she can check the man's pulse. I tell her, we're hearing noises, like he's trying to breathe. Her eyes widen, and she grabs another stewardess, the one with the stethoscope. They reach across me once more, this time removing the sheet. And as morbidly curious as I am, I can't bring myself to look at the man. But the smell... It's enough this time to make me get up. I apologize as I pushed past the group. I'm definitely going to throw up. I actually manage to make it to the bathroom, but I lose whatever contents I had once I get there. Mainly, leftover alcohol. It's horrible, but it doesn't compare to what I've experienced thus far. I, a full-grown man, wanted to cry at the idea of going back to sitting next to a dead man. But the door, it won't open. Why the fuck won't it open? This entire flight is turning into a flight of firsts for me. I start shaking the door, switching the lock back and forth, anything I can. I think to myself, am I seriously going to have to press the help button? I keep trying the door, and as I'm pushing, doing nothing special, it just opens, almost hitting the flight attendant who had made it to the other side of the door. She looked a little confused, but God, if only she knew how fucking confused I was. She's asking me if I'm okay. I don't even know what to say, so I give her an answer by shaking my head and walking back to my seat. But I turn around to ask the woman, was he alive? But her wince tells me no, and then she confirms it with a verbal no. Great. The last two hours of the flight, much like the first four, were hell. 
My free vouchers or flying miles didn't seem worth this experience at all. Would I ever even get on another plane? I thought to myself. Approaching our aisle, I wanted to just go live in the bathroom, but I sucked it up and took my seat. The woman in front, she turns around again. Psst. Hey. They said the man doesn't have a pulse, that he's really dead. I wait, expecting her to tell me more. She doesn't, so I share that I'm aware. She scoffs as though we're on the outside of some joke, and she says, But you heard him too, right? Like you heard him talking and the moaning, like, please tell me you heard that too. The thing is, I'd heard some of it. Worst of all, I'd felt several of these, post-mortem, but speaking. No, no, I hadn't heard that. I didn't know what to say. Should I lie and spare this woman's sanity? Do I tell the truth, potentially sending her into some sort of, I don't know, psychosis? My brain truly couldn't handle much more. For all I knew, this lady was nuts. Something told me, though, that she wasn't. I just told her, I've definitely been hearing things over here. This is all just very disturbing. She nods in agreement, exchanges a half-hearted smile before turning back around. What the fuck? Never been so happy to land. I've had turbulence. I've had actual emergency landings before. But this was my first time experiencing death on a flight. And I gotta say... Hands down the worst. I imagine the plane literally crashing is the only thing that could surpass this situation. Leaving that airport, I was replaying everything in my head, and again out loud to my girlfriend. And it's like, was the woman crazy? Or is it even remotely possible that somehow she was hearing this man's ghost speaking to her? I don't really mess with that stuff, but... Apparently my girlfriend thinks it's literally possible. She also thought that being able to fly anywhere was pretty great, despite everything I'd just told her. But truly, I haven't been very eager to fly again.